Adobe XD is a powerful platform for creating user experiences by way of the iterative design process, all at the speed of thought. In this tutorial, I'll get you started building a mobile web experience using some of the more innovative design features in XD. If you want to follow along with me, you'll need to make sure you've downloaded the XD Design zip file and opened it up on your local machine. In the Uncompressed folder, you'll want to open the XD Design Practice file. You'll also want to make sure you've updated XD to the latest version using the Creative Cloud Desktop app. With those housekeeping items out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on the project. As we move forward through this tutorial, I'm going to point out some of my favorite shortcut keys for accessing the XD interface. But let's begin by just navigating the design canvas. By default, XD is going to open up a file and it's going to make sure you can see all of the artwork, all of the artboards on the canvas by zooming those to fit the screen. You'll notice here in the upper right hand corner, I'm currently at about 7% zoom level. If I come to the right drop down menu, I can change that value. Also here in the view menu, there's some zoom options with shortcut keys. So notice I can zoom in or out using command on the Mac or control on Windows, and then the plus and minus key. I can also go to individual specific values using some shortcut keys. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 2, Import Content with Repeat Grid, visible in the Practice file, and the Layers panel open. If I hold down the Space Bar, it'll temporarily change my Select tool to a Hand tool. I can move that artboard over a little bit more to the center of the screen so I can see it more easily. What I'm looking to do here is simulate a product catalog of chairs. So I want to take this tile that I've designed and repeat it across and down the artboard. Now I can always come in and select this content and just copy and paste it over and over again. But instead I'd like to use a productivity feature known as Repeat Grid. To do this, what I want to do is actually import images and text into my XD application. You're going to want to navigate to where you installed the practice file for this Get Started with XD Design. In that practice file folder is another folder called Chair Images and Text. I'll go ahead and navigate over to that. And you can see I've got two text files and a number of images of chairs. Now that I've located those images, I'll switch back to XD. And what I'd like to do is repeat this tile that I've created as I mentioned, across and down on the screen. Let's focus now on how we can add some interactive elements to bring our design to life. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 3, Define Interactivity, in the Practice file visible on the Design Canvas. In this step, you'll notice I've included two artboards, and the one on the left is much taller than the one on the right. This is simulating a classic web browser experience on a mobile device. Web browsers tend to be fixed in width and variable in height based on the amount of content that you're showing. The way that websites handle that is they allow you to scroll down on the screen to see the content below. In order to simulate what would happen in a real web browser, what I want to do is define what's known as the viewport height for the artboard here on the left to match that default size on the right. To determine the size of the artboard on the right, I'm going to click on its title, Chairs Detail, and here in the Properties Inspector, I can see it's a height of 812 pixels. Next, what I'll do is click on the title of the Gantt Collection, the longer artboard, and back in the Properties Inspector, what I want to do is move down to the scrolling area. There's a drop down there. I'm going to select Vertical, and then in the Viewport Height field, I'm going to define that as 812 pixels and then type Return on the keyboard. What you'll notice on the Design Canvas is I now have a handle here that indicates what the Viewport Height is for that artboard. As I mentioned earlier, XD was created with speed in mind, and part of designing at the speed of thought includes the ability to reuse elements and apply global changes quickly. Let's focus on a couple of the productivity features that XD includes along these lines. 
If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 4 Reuse Colors and Character Styles in the Practice file visible on the Design Canvas. You'll also want to make sure that you're in Design Mode, and here in the lower left-hand corner of the application, I want to toggle from the Layers panel to the panel just above it, the Libraries panel. In this panel, you'll notice I have the ability to define colors, character styles, and components. When defining colors and character styles, I can easily just extract or pull the values from any objects that I have here on the Design Canvas. You'll notice that I have four artboards here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the title of the first artboard. With that artboard selected, back in the panel, in the colors area, I'm going to click on the plus sign. What this does is extracts any colors that occur on that artboard and brings them into the panel. I'd like to do the same for character styles. So to the right of character styles, I'll click on that plus sign. Notice that it brings over those character styles. If I hover over any one of them, a tooltip shows me that it captured not only the typeface, but its point size, its weight, any line spacing or character sizing I might have defined as well. In this last step, let's define two more design side interactions, fixed elements and scroll groups. If you're following along with me, you'll want to have Step 5, Final Touches, in the Practice file visible on the Design Canvas. You'll want to be in Design Mode, and you'll want to make sure that you have the Layers panel open by clicking on the icon in the lower left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and hold down the spacebar and move this Explore artboard to the center so I can see it a bit more clearly, and just magnify it just so that I can see that header area. Okay, so there's a concept known as persistent navigation in interface design. And the idea is that your user always has control over the interface. They always have the ability to navigate where they want to through this persistent navigation. I can achieve that with this page by making sure that the navigation items here towards the top are pinned and fixed towards the top, allowing the content below it to scroll underneath. To prepare for this, what I've done, I'll go ahead and click on this group here to show you, is I've gone in and created a group. I named it Top Nav. Here in the Layers panel, I can expand the folder to see all of the elements that are in it. And towards the back of the group, I defined a simple rectangle. I named it Header Container, but I layered it behind the group. This will allow me to have an opaque background so that when the content scrolls behind, you won't see it scroll through my navigation. I went in and saved it out as a group, as I mentioned, and I named it Top Navigation. What I want to do is come in and select that group, so I'll make sure it's selected here in the Layers panel. And in order to pin it or define it as a fixed element, I come here in the Properties Inspector, and in the Transform area, there's an option to fix position when scrolling. I'll go ahead and check that option, and let's take a look at the work we've done so far. So with the artboard still selected, I'll come in the upper right corner and click on the Desktop Preview app. Here within the app, I can start to scroll down on my content and notice, well, two things are happening. First off, my navigation is remaining pinned at the top. But a funny thing happens, which is the Z order or the layer structure is not correct and that the chair is kind of floating on top of my navigation. That's okay, I'll keep my preview up and here in the layers panel, what I want to do is come in and select that top navigation group and just press and drag it up towards the top of the stack. So I want it to be the topmost layer in the hierarchical structure of all of my layers within that artboard. So now that I've got that set, I'll come back here and bring back up that desktop preview. This time when I brought it up, by the way, I used a keyboard shortcut. On the Mac, I used Command. On Windows, it would be Control. And hit the Return key on the keyboard, which will bring up that desktop preview. With the desktop preview visible now, as I scroll down on the artboard, I'm getting the behavior that I'd like. So all of the content behind is scrolling and remaining behind my navigation.